Hunter was the king of talk radio until his wife called his show and told the world about their marriage problems. We have seen a counselor and he has nixed that idea. That night, Hunter's wife was shot dead next to him in their bed. Now, as cops probe the mystery, Ron Hunter breaks his silence. Here I sit with no job, no income, two kids, and feel like I've been run over by a Mack truck. An exclusive, if words could kill. It would have been just another night. Joel Steinberg, the man who killed little Lisa. And welcome to A Current Affair. Ron Hunter was a radio star until he was tangled in an incredible scandal. His wife was shot to death as she lay next to him in their marital bed. The shooting occurred only hours after she called in and humiliated Ron on his own talk show. Ron Hunter is a former colleague of our own Maury Povich. And Maury is the only newsman in the country he'd talk to. New Orleans, it's one of my favorite towns in the country. In the country, anywhere for that matter. But I don't want to be here now, not for this story. It's too close and too personal. It's about this business and two of my friends. One friend isn't here anymore. Her name was Mary Lou Hunter. Everybody, including me, called her Bunny. She was young, 32, and beautiful. A loving mother, a devoted wife, who had everything to live for until a bullet fired at close range took her life. Hi, ready for some good television? From he was Ron Hunter, anchor, reporter, at one time, big time. We had worked together in Chicago. He was the star with a six-figure salary. I was his second banana. Later in Philadelphia, our paths would cross again. Ron was alternately ambitious and bossy, tough and tender, a video vigilante with a heart of gold. Even the birth of his own daughter was recorded for the news. We tell it for the news or something. Six for the news, but we couldn't make it. The ratings soared, the accolades rolled in. Most caring newscaster, a news phenomenon, a friend to cops and children in their time of need. In the past, I've given help. When people wanted help, the first person they'd think of in terms of a consumer advocate was Ron Hunter. And here I sit with no job, no income, two kids, and feel like I've been run over by a Mack truck after my wife took her life. But we're getting ahead of the story. Somewhere between Chicago, Philadelphia, Miami, and Buffalo, Ron Hunter's star began to fade. Some said it was his ego. Others, his abrasive style. The Hunters moved back to New Orleans, and by 1988, his career, and reportedly his marriage, was on the skids. Ron and Bunny had moved from this home in an exclusive section of New Orleans. Gone was the Jaguar and a six-figure salary. In its place, an apartment near the projects. Money was tight, and Ron was producing and hosting a local Crime Stoppers show. No one dreamed the cops he worked with would soon come knocking on his door. The next time I saw Ron, was to talk about the circumstances surrounding the unthinkable, Bunny's death. Why are you speaking out now? To let people know why I'm coming on a current affair and talking to Maury Povich. I just want I want the people to know that I loved Bunny that I feel that Bunny loved Maury as a friend, and I feel I can talk to him. We're tired of being crucified. When we come back, Ron Hunter talks about the night his wife was shot to death in their bed. This was not her. Also, you'll hear the fateful phone call he took from his wife on the air hours before the shooting. Why don't you take your hand and push him off his chair? And later, inside the mind of a monster. <laughs> now, Maury Povich continues the story of Ron Hunter, the talk show host whose wife was shot dead next to her in bed. You'll hear Ron 
and the incredible on-air telephone call hours before the tragedy. Info Radio, 1350 AM. All right, uh, the Ron Hunter report on Info Radio. With a year ago, Ron Hunter landed here at a 5,000-watt information radio station in the shadow of the Superdome. Ron was hoping that this would be the beginning of the long road back. He started working at $5 an hour at nights, then worked his way up to be the host of the afternoon drive time talk show. And then, a couple of weeks ago, on one afternoon, one phone call brought Ron Hunter's marriage and career to a screeching halt. The Ron Hunter Report, WFMB. I Ron's guest that day was TV personality and sex therapist, Dr. Judith Kuriansky, author of a book called How to Love a Nice Guy. We were doing great. 5.55. The monitor shows a caller by the name of Ariel. Next caller. Ariel, you're on the air. Only a portion of that call was reportedly recorded, but the woman complained about her husband's inattention in and out of bed. Well, you have a choice to make then. One is you can see a counselor with him to see whether or not there are ways to escalate the well, process of his growth. We have, I have an issue, you know, I've tried that we have seen a counselor and he has nixed that idea after the first or second session. By then, Ron had recognized the caller's voice. He knew it all too well. But in the darkened studio of WSMB, the tape rolled on. So you may have to, this is a really risky thing for me to tell you, you may have to give him a real big ultimatum to push him off his chair and make him say, oh my God, I don't want to I don't want to lose her. Well, why don't you take your hand and push him off his chair? He's sitting two feet from you. <laughs> ah, well, I'm glad that he heard what we said. Thank you. Okay. All right, Ron Hunter report, WSMB. I sure worked my way into that one, didn't I? <laughs> You're smiling. <laughs> I'm dying over here. It was hard to believe the caller was Ron's wife, Bunny. You know, I felt embarrassed, um, not for the program and not for me. I felt a little embarrassed for her because it was not like her. This was not her. We talked about the fact that uh, everybody was worried about Bunny Hunter living the night and everything. Where did Talk show host Michael Creasy, recently promoted to replace Ron Hunter as program director at WSMB, says the other employees weren't that surprised by Bunny's call. He says that she had called before to complain about their marriage, but never on the air. Well, the feeling here at the radio station right after the phone call and after the show was, my God, this is shocking, and something's going to happen in that household some sort of argument, some sort of very dramatic uh, stand will take place between Bunny Hunter and Ron Hunter. They had a volatile relationship anyway. It was, for there for the, it was there for the staff to see. Something traumatic did happen in the Hunter home that night, but Ron says they didn't argue. He says that Bunny was depressed and embarrassed. He says she didn't want to talk about it. Ron eventually took a sleeping pill and went to bed. I was very much asleep when I heard what I thought was the equivalent of if you took a paper cup and you took your foot and you went like that on it. That's all I heard. Now you have to understand that what I perceived as a paper cup was actually a 38 caliber pistol. I don't think she meant to kill herself. I think she meant to call attention just like she made the phone call on the air. The next morning, the headlines screamed the story, and in between the lines, the burning question, was it suicide or what? They have had not had one uh, scintilla of evidence to show anything but suicide. It's what they've told me, and every time they've come in this house, we just want to walk through again, or we want to sit down and talk to you, or can we talk to your kids? Yes, sir. You've made, Allison has made statements. Yes, she has. Allison has stated on two occasions to the police that her mother woke her up, stroked her hair, and said, I'm going away for a long time. Despite the statement, despite the reported lack of evidence, the local press went on a feeding frenzy. Bunny was dead. 
but Ron was bleeding in the water. The newspaper and the TV station cited court papers that Bunny had tried to leave Ron twice and had charged him with abuse. There were even photographs, bruises, cuts. The photographer who took them came forward with her story. And she told me that she was beaten up by her husband and that it had happened on several occasions, even with the children at home. She said she received their severe bruises that were on her arm and the severe cuts from being thrown across a bedpost or into a bedpost. When I asked her why didn't she leave her husband, she said that the daughter was manipulated by her husband and she felt feelings of guilt. He would, he would pit the daughter against her. And those charges true, untrue? Not true. I don't care what anybody says, there's an answer for them, but it has absolutely nothing to do with me. And then, after his wife is dead, his reputation tarnished, what may have been the hardest blow of all. First, his name was painted over on the billboard for his show, and then the final insult, just eight days after Bunny's death, Ron Hunter was fired. It happened at the Pontchartrain Hotel over breakfast with his bosses at WSMB. They said, you're off the air. I said, I beg your pardon? They said, you're fired. I said, I'm fired. And I looked over at my daughter, and she had looked over at me, and she looked back at the man. And I will never forget that. She had just come out of one tragic situation, losing her mom. And now her dad is being fired in front of her. We wanted to talk to the ones who did the dirty deed. But the only person we could interview was the man who took Ron's job. The fact that Ron Hunter did not cut his wife off the air, did not dump her off the air, along with all of the things that had preceded that the last couple of weeks, the low ratings, the difficulty of other employees to work with Ron Hunter, probably did have a lot to do with his letting go, with his firing. It makes a mockery of justice. It's a travesty of an employee's rights. This is something you don't do after somebody has gone through what this family's gone through. Today, Ron Hunter is twisting in the wind, waiting for a coroner's report he hopes will clear his name. His past is destroyed, his future in doubt, and the present is closing in. Every day, he thinks of what he should have told Bunny the night she died. There are really only two days that can destroy our lives, yesterday and tomorrow. Think about it. Yesterday, with its hurts and heartaches, is over, gone. We can't bring back yesterday. Tomorrow is unborn. It's, it's unreal. We can prepare for tomorrow, but we can't do anything about it. Today, on the other hand, anybody can fight a battle for just one day. The police and the coroner wouldn't talk to us, but a ruling on Bonnie's death is expected next week. We'll have that for you.